Ooh, I tried to do a silk press on my own hair. It went really well the first day and then today it was 60 degrees out and it has since frizzed up. But I actually really like my hair this big. I like it this big and fluffy so uh, yeah, I'm digging her. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, what took you so long? Today we are talking about confidence. I thought that this was a great opportunity to share with you all all the things that I keep in mind as I am boosting my confidence as I go out into the world because hopefully it'll help you. There are so many different reasons that you need confidence and why confidence and being a confident person is going to benefit you in life, in finances, in your relationship, just really across the board. Before we get into any more of the details of this video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell button so that you're notified anytime I drop a video like this or any of my other awesome videos with that being said let's just jump right into it so first talking about what confidence is and why you even need confidence right so confidence is the feeling that you have that comes from inside of you that you are able to do anything accomplish anything and complete successfully anything that you put your mind and heart to there have been so many times that i needed to be confident so I work in healthcare. For most of you that know, I am a clinical pharmacist and I teach in a college of pharmacy. So not only as a professor, but also as a pharmacist working with physicians, nurses, all kinds of other healthcare providers. In my interactions with them, these people appear to be some of the most confident people, the most knowledgeable people, the most professional and expert in their field. And it's definitely something that I myself, going into a healthcare field such as pharmacy, had to be sure that I was able to be on par with my colleagues. But I wanna let you in on a little secret. Are you listening? Think about the dumbest person that you've worked with. No, really, think about the stupidest person that you've ever worked with. Think about how you've thought to yourself, how did that person even get through the interview process to get hired and be working right next to me? Think about how every day you say to yourself, how is this person, this very dumb, stupid person still employed? They're just not that bright, they're not that smart. But what they are is their confidence. They go into their interviews and they execute. And a lot of people confuse confidence with competence. And so they end up getting hired because they are portraying all the confidence that they know what they're doing, that they are confident in who they are and that they are able to execute and do things successfully. So they get hired. Confidence is something that you pull from within. It is not a determination of your actual capabilities. And so there are a lot of people who are faking it until they make it. So what I want us to do here is not fake it until you make it. I want us to actually rewire how we think about ourselves so that we are able to actually, in fact, be confident and more confident in our interactions and in our parenthood and in anything we want to do. First question, why do you even need confidence? I just told you about my experience working in healthcare, and certainly confidence is going to help you as far as job opportunities. I just explained the example of someone who has been hired and absolutely knows nothing, but was hired because they're very, very confident and portrayed that confidence to someone else. What is really happening is that confidence correlates directly with trust. The more confident you are and you appear to other people, the more likely they are to trust you. I mean, think about some of the most confident people that you know. If they tell you that up is now down, you are going to go and Google it and say, huh, like I didn't know that. I had no idea that up was now down. Because the more confident that you appear and the more confident that you are, the more people are going to trust and believe what you are saying. Healthcare is super important for us to be confident. And not just to appear confident, but to actually be confident in what we are doing. Because we need our patients to trust us. As a pharmacist, I need the doctors that I'm working with to trust Trust me. So if I go in there with a recommendation that's, I, I think be, we, mm, 
stumbling over my words or doing any of the things that would instill a lack of confidence in someone, they're not going to trust me and they're not going to get the care that they need and then I'm not doing my job as a pharmacist. So important in so many roles, but the baseline reason that it's so important is because it helps to build trust. And now as I've moved into this creator space and I'm doing this influencing thing, nobody is going to listen to me talking about hair care or about clothes or about anything if they don't trust me. A lot of the reason that folks trust me is that I am confident in what I'm talking about, a product, a service, a clothing item or whatever have you, then you are able to trust me and believe me that I actually enjoy this product, love this service, use this clothing. If you don't take away anything else from why you need confidence, just know that confidence directly correlates with trust. You want to build trust in all the relationships that you have. All right, the main reason that you're here because if you're here to learn about how to build more confidence, which I assume you are, otherwise why would you still be watching this video? You're going to have to really work on changing your mindset. So thinking about changing your mindset, I get asked a lot by my students, by y'all here on social media, just how do I build my confidence? Like how did I get so confident? Where did it come from? What do I do to maintain it? When I think about my faith and I think about my faith in God, I get a certain level of peace knowing that God has everything in store for me, ready for me, laid out for me. It's really just me stepping into it. For my women of faith, I want you to remember your confidence in God and remember that God is confident in you. And so if you are not confident in what God is confident in, what are you doing? I think it's really important to remember that confidence is a feeling. It's like any other emotion. You have to feed into it for it to grow. So thinking about, I'm going to think about a time when I was mad at Dre. Like he pissed me off about something. And I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing dishes or cleaning or whatever. Because that's like my thing I do when I'm pissed is I clean. I'm doing whatever cleaning I'm doing. And I'm just thinking about all the things that he did to make me mad and I'm getting mad all over again. I'm feeding into the anger emotion. And so obviously in your relationships, cutting those types of snakes off at the head, right? And not feeding into them is absolutely going to help you. When we're talking about confidence, you need to feed into your confidence and you have to do it regularly. Cause like anything else in life, the repetition of that confidence boosting language is going to stick with you and make that feeling of confidence more permanent. Changing your mindset, easier said than done. Grab a sheet of paper, fold it in half, and write on one half of the sheet of paper all of the things that make you feel less than confident. I put things like I don't belong or I am not good enough or there are other people who are doing it better than I am. Fill that side of the sheet with all of the anti-confidence statements that come to mind. Once you've filled that half with all of those negative statements, I want you to fill the other half by refuting each of those negative statements individually. So the I don't belong here. I refute that easily with, I obviously belong here because God put me here. And so if there's not a place for me, I guess I'm making a place for me. I'm not good enough. If I wasn't good enough, I wouldn't have gotten here. You are going to have to have a significant shift in your mindset. It has to go from negative to positive. And so it's not just about creating this list, but it's about building the habit that anytime your brain starts to have a negative thought, you immediately go to the refuting positive thought. Like these are the types of things that you want to continuously repeat to yourself so that it becomes second nature and it just becomes a habit that anytime your brain starts to think things negative, starts to think these negative thoughts, you immediately have the language to refute that negative thought. But the important thing is not how you initially feel, it's how you ultimately feel about that situation and about yourself. Like overall, like yes, maybe I had a shitty day, maybe I didn't do this thing right, and maybe I dropped the ball on this, but overall, I'm a bomb ass bitch. Facts are the facts. I just need you to know that was real. <laughs> In addition to changing your mindset about yourself, you really have to change your mindset about you in relation to other people. You gotta stop worrying about what other people think. 
it is holding you back in so many ways and confidence is one of the key ways that it is holding you back. The more you're worried about what other people are doing and how they're doing it and how you think they're performing better than you, you are constantly going to be in a cycle of comparing yourself to them, comparing you and how you're doing to them, which makes no sense because you're not them. You'll never be confident being someone else. Did you hear me? You'll never be confident being someone else. You're gonna be the most confident being yourself. Your weird, quirky, funny, silly, uh, little bit too nosy sometimes self. Like that is where you're going to be the most confident because you don't know how to be anybody else. I feel like, <laughs> Stop worrying about other people is such a huge thing because like I said, it affects so many other areas, not even just confidence. You have to remember that really everyone is worried about themselves. So you're worried about your, your mustache and homegirl's worried about her unibrow. And I got my own concerns. Like you go into a room and you think everyone's looking at you and guess what? Everyone thinks everyone's looking at them. We are a very self-absorbed species. Don't worry about other people. Worry about being the best version of you. And I know it sounds super, super cheesy, but you can never fake being yourself. You know this whole fake it till you make it thing? You cannot fake being yourself. And that's where your confidence is going to thrive. You're going to be your most confident when you are being you. Really good exercise that I recently practiced. It's the beginning of the year, so every year vision boarding reevaluating me, the woman I am, the woman I wanna be, how I'm being portrayed to the world. Um, a really good exercise is to ask yourself, what does your best self look like? What does your most confident self look like? What does she sound like? What does she wear? How does she speak? How does she appear to other people? Like going through that list and really being specific. Like imagine yourself, the, the version of yourself that you see being the most confident, the one that walks in the room and people are like, damn, that's a confident bitch. Like imagine that person. What does that person look like? How do they dress themselves? What do they like to talk about? New Year, I actually did this for myself and I titled it Her. Like this document, I literally just did it in a Word document, a Google Doc, Word Doc, whatever your preference is. And I titled it Her. And I answered all of those questions. She smells good. She speaks eloquently. She sounds knowledgeable. She carries herself about what my most confident self would look like. And in the very last line of the document, I said, she is me and I am her. Because I really wanted to reiterate that it is, I am this woman, I am this woman. I just need to continue to feed into the confidence so I can continue to be this woman. So that's a really good exercise. Um, and if you don't have the answers to those questions yet, stick around. We're going to talk about more of that as we go into the rest of this video. But first, we're changing our mindset. Next, we really need to consider how we carry ourselves, specifically talking about our body language. So body language is so huge and it's so obvious. I mean, think about some of the people that you've seen that you knew they didn't have no confidence. Like, I mean, they're slouched over, they are fidgeting with things in their hands, they are looking down. I mean, there are all different ways that you can look like you don't have confidence. But there are a couple of ways that you can look like you do have confidence. And it's not even just about looking like you have confidence. They actually will help you to have more confidence. And so one huge thing is sitting up straight, having your posture such that your back is upright and straight and you are looking forward and ahead. And that is such a huge confidence booster. First of all, like I said, it makes the rest of the world say this person is super confident. They are confident in themselves and they are confident in the space that they're taking up in the world. And that is what straight back, sitting up straight and your posture says to other people. But immediately you will find that when you go from slouching to sitting up straight, it's like the air is different up here. You just feel absolutely more confident. So I really do want us to get out of this mindset of like faking it till you make it. Like I get it, okay, listen, I get it. 
fake it till you make it. But I don't want you to fake confidence because you don't have to. You don't have to because you are amazing. You don't have to be fake about being confident because you should be confident because you a bad bitch like me. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. Did you like that? Did you like that? One thing I'd also suggest as far as body language is picking a couple of power poses that make you feel more confident. So I'll give you the example for me. I sit in a lot of meetings very much like this. And I have a tendency, as y'all can already see, moving my hands. Don't think that this affects my confidence or how my confidence is portrayed, but it's just something that I personally am a little bit insecure about. So I don't really love having my hands waving all over the place. I also have a tendency to be playing with this hair because it's nice hair and I like it. So I have a tendency to fidget as well. One thing that I will do to help boost my confidence how I feel and how I appear to others in order to avoid fidgeting is I will clasp my hands and I will actually just put them over my knee. I will cross my legs and I will sit straight up and I'll have my hands together over my knee. And essentially what this does for me is it keeps my hands together so that I don't fidget. And it helps me again so that my posture is upright. It's really hard to slouch when you have your legs crossed. So crossing my legs immediately makes me sit up straight and then I just rest my hand over my knee and this is how I speak to you. And I feel like it is giving me all the confidence in the world to continue this conversation. And it's, um, I'm certain that I am coming across very confident to you right now. Other things as far as body language is considering how you're breathing. So deep breaths will really help you to maintain your focus and your confidence. A lot of times the things that can throw confidence include the rapid shallow breaths. So the breathing really fast and things of that nature. Now, sometimes that's really out of your control and that may indicate that you're having like an anxiety or a panic attack. So definitely don't ignore the signs of that. But sometimes it really is about slowing down your breathing and focusing on your breathing that allows you to elicit confidence as well as maintain it. So taking deeper breaths really helps Taking those deeper breaths really helps you to refocus yourself and refocus because a lot of times the reason that you're not feeling confident does have to do with stress and anxiety. It has to do with stress that you think that you're not performing properly or anxiety that you're not good enough. And so those shallow rapid breaths absolutely happen when you are not feeling confident. So taking deep, slow breaths allows you to think through and really say to yourself, okay, why am I not feeling confident? And it gives you the opportunity to think about those negative statements and turn them into the positive statements. When you're breathing all fast and it's the rapid breathing, your brain doesn't even have enough time to move from the negative thoughts to the positive thoughts. So I want you, the next time you're feeling, the next time you're not feeling so confident, I want you to sit up straight and I want you to take a deep breath. That's it. And actually, this is really funny. I wanted, to, this is really interesting. I wanted to add this because I am a pharmacist and I work in healthcare and I learned this in school and I just thought it was really interesting. But animals that have rapid respiratory rates, so animals that have rapid respiratory rates tend to be smaller animals with shorter lifespans. So I just want you to think about that. Respiratory rate meaning how quickly they're breathing in and out. So for example, mice have respiratory rates that can go up into like the 200s. Uh -huh. Whereas dogs have respiratory rates that go up to, to maybe the 40s. Respiratory rates that shouldn't really go past like 20-ish. So the point being that the faster something is breathing, Generally speaking, okay, generally speaking, all right, I ain't no vet or nothing, but generally speaking, these animals with rapid respiratory rates tend to have shorter lifespans. So think about you as a human. Not only does shorter, rapid breathing really affect your confidence, it may even be affecting your health. So if nothing else, I want you to take a deep breath because it's good for you body language, I feel like we cannot ignore communication. So that is verbal communication specifically. I know that the times that I'm feeling the least confident is when I'm fumbling through what I am talking about. Because 
I am not conveying to the person that I'm talking to that I know what I'm speaking about. If I knew what I was talking about, I'd be able to talk about it from A to Z with no interruptions. But when I'm fumbling or I'm stumbling or I'm stuttering, it makes me feel less confident. And the less confident I feel, the more I stutter. And then it just keeps going and I just keep feeding into each other. <laughs> Obviously, we're all adults. Communication is a vital part of how we get our points across to other people. But I think it's really important to also know that if you are somebody who struggles with getting your ideas out, verbalizing them, etc. Some things that have really helped me as far as making sure that my speech is eloquent, my, my verbiage is fluid, is making sure that I prepare beforehand. So I teach and I lecture in classes and I'm talking in front of the students like on hours on end. I try to avoid filler words such as like, um, so, because those words tend to detract from the message that I'm trying to convey and it takes away from the confidence that I have in what I'm saying and then the truth is I want to encourage you to dress the part. Next up is appearance. I want to encourage you to dress the part. I will never forget that <laughs> one time I was in middle school and my mom finally let me get a shirt from papaya and it was like one of those like graphic shirts with the spray paint design on it, a couple of jewels bedazzled. Like my mom is old school Sierra Leonean, okay? She was not letting me wear anything like that, never. But that day she was feeling, I don't know if she got paid extra what, but she was like, girl, go ahead, get you your little shirt. So I got that shirt and I wore that shirt every single week till the seams was busted. Because when I put that shirt on and I went to school, I remember I, felt so good. I just, I felt better. Did better on my math test. I was just a better version of myself. Now that is not to say that your outward appearance should be so pivotal, so instrumental, so important that you need to dress a certain way in order to get confidence. My best self, my most confident self, she has her makeup on and she gets her nails done. That's just me. And that's not to say that that's the same for everyone else. You have to decide what that looks like for you. I'm never as confident as when I have a fresh set. I just, I know this. It's not to say that you can't be confident without changing your outward appearance. You don't have to look good by my standard or even your own standard in order to have confidence. Think of dressing the part as the icing on the cake, right? The cake would be banging. It would be phenomenal without the icing. But the icing just takes it up to the next level. You know what I'm saying? If you start changing your mindset around confidence, it will already be there at baseline. Dressing the part is just icing on the cake. So the last thing I want to talk about is taking criticism constructively and remembering that we all have bad days and no one's perfect. This is important to talk about because confidence gets a bad rap because there are a lot of people who walk around confidence and they think that they are free of imperfection and free of flaws. And that is not confidence, that's a bit of arrogance and probably something that's DSM-5 diagnosable, but we're not talking about that right now. It would obviously hurt anyone's ego to realize that they aren't representing themselves the way that they want to represent themselves. But what you want to do is take any kind of criticism constructively and use it as an opportunity to address any deficiencies that have been pointed out to you. Because the sooner that you shift your thinking about it from a weakness to an area for growth, the more quickly you can master the language that will help your mindset shift from negative to positive anytime it comes up again in the future. Guys, we talked about a lot. I feel confident that I give you a lot of really good tips on how to boost your confidence. And these these tips for confidence apply to all arenas of life, work, family, motherhood. Now that I've become a mom, this is just another area that I have to build confidence in. And that's something that you also have to appreciate too, is that as you go into new areas and new things in life and new phases of life, things that you've not done before, you are going to feel a little less than confident. As you continue to build that confidence language, you will have the language that you need to remove all of that negative self-talk from your mind and really be able to tell yourself you are all of the things that you want to be. And if you're not that version of yourself, you're working towards that. I am literally doing my best. And so I'm, I'm super confident because I'm 
I'm giving it my best right now. Yes. I gave you a lot of really great tips on confidence and I am confident that these tips and doing these things will help you to boost your confidence because once you're able to really change your mindset and develop those positive language statements for yourself, if you can do that in one area of your life, you can absolutely apply that to other areas of your life as well. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and then share with the class in the comments any things that you're doing to boost confidence as we go into the new year. I really hope that y'all got some benefit from this because I do believe that being able to speak positively about yourself is going to certainly help you to be more confident as you move through the world. You should be because I think you're amazing. You definitely should think you're amazing. Like, why wouldn't you think you're amazing? Like, what are we even talking about, girl? You're amazing. It's just, like, if you don't know, I'm telling you, like, let's stop this foolishness already. Good night, my amazing friend. I love you.